thank you so much, uh, Excellency, dear Joy, Excellencies, uh, Mr. Under Secretary General, uh, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to congratulate the Permanent Mission of Nigeria, the Universal Peace uh, Federation, and other co-sponsors on their initiative to organize today's important event. It is a particular pleasure uh, for me uh, to speak here under the eyes of our host, whom I experienced as one of the three lionesses of the Security <laughs> Council uh, during the year of 2010. And I do have to say, uh, women uh, are still underrepresented in the Security Council. I don't know how many were on the Security Council when Qatar served uh, on the Council in 2006 and 2007, but three is an important number, but still not uh, good enough, if I may say so. Uh, and I do have to say also that I was deeply impressed uh, by the cooperation we had with Nigeria on one subject that I will come to, the protection of civilians in armed conflict and one specific issue. The theme of today's event, Women and the World at a Turning Point, has been well chosen in view of important recent developments, and uh, Ambassador Joy Ogu already mentioned it. The creation of UN Women and its official launch during the recent session of the CSW has been a long anticipated and proud moment for the entire United Nation membership. It has given to all of us and to me personally and others, high hopes uh, for the expectations, for our expectations in the future. Let me also say that it is a privilege uh, to speak after Ambassador Al Nasser. Uh, he has uh, just uh, explained that uh, he, and we congratulate him, and I congratulate him personally on being appointed as the candidate of the Asian group uh, for the only candidate for the presidency of the 66th General Assembly. It will not only give him a unique chance to fulfill his aspirations in revitalizing the General Assembly, but also in moving forward the important agenda that we are discussing here today. Uh, and he will count and can count on our full support in all this. During Austria's recent tenure on the Security Council, we have, as I've already said, uh, focused, amongst other things, on the protections of civilians in armed conflict. And when we speak about civilians in armed conflict who need to be protected, in the majority of cases, we're speaking of women and of children. And I wanted to refer more specifically to the experience we had together with Nigeria on uh, protecting civilians, refugees in Chad when, th when there was a difficult moment, when there was an issue of whether the UN uh, mission could stay there and whether it could still play a role in the protection of civilians. And I do have to say that it was a difficult debate, but the voice of Nigeria was impressive and very strong on this subject. The other issue we have tried to focus on is the implementation of Security Council Resolution 1325 on women and peace and security and its follow-up uh, uh, in, in a various number of resolutions and especially in the presidential statement of the Security Council of October of last year. I think that the protection of women uh, in armed conflict, the, the agenda of women, peace and security has made great strides, more particularly during the last two years. A number of very important decisions were taken uh, by the Security Council and the presidential statement that I referred to in October uh, 2000, um, uh, 2010 established, as you know, a whole list of indicators which will make progress in this field measurable. And here again, I have to say it was very important to have a cross-regional alliance on these issues within the Security Council. The decisions were taken in the month of October under the presidency of Uganda, and here again, Nigeria was not surprisingly an important partner. In combating sexual violence and enhancing our efforts to ensure women's participation in all peace-building efforts, we must also be committed to continuing the important work of combating and eliminating violence against women and enhancing women's empowerment. Women's protection and participation is not only crucial in conflict and post-conflict situation, but it is also the basis for peace and sustainable development. Inequality comes with a high uh, price tag in terms of economic and social costs. The current assessment of the implementation of the Millennium Development Goals conclude on the need of, uh, concludes on the need of a better inclusion of the most vulnerable into the development process. The ongoing CSW sessions look at ways to better realize the full potential of women and girls in the areas of science and technology, including for the promotion of women's access to full employment and decent work. Advancing gender equality and empowering women is a precondition for poverty reduction, sustainable economic growth, and social development, since empowered women are important agents of change within their societies. 
I therefore once again welcome today's extremely timely event and wish the organizers a successful and productive meeting. Thank you very much.